Now, in order to um, put um, the highlights of the kind of key articles in here, which is going to be really, really busy, um, take a break, use this uh, kind of strip of white down the inside left of the cover. So to do that again, it needs to be the rectangle tool that I'm going to pick. I'm going to hover this so it stops where the red box is, but it starts from the inside of the spine. Click and hold down the mouse, drag all the way down to the bottom. Um, like so then fill it with white paper, of course, press return. And then in terms of the overall width, switch to my selection tool. That needs to have a width of about 200 in there. It needs to have a width of about a uh, hundred or so in there. So if I drag this out here to about like that. Now that looks really big at the moment and it does and it's hiding most of the lady on the front. But what we need to do next is we need to be able to pull this top right corner in and create an angle in there. So to do that, um, this tool at the top, the selection tool, only allows you to grab the whole thing, the whole box and move it around. The one underneath it gives you direct access to the things that create its shape, which are the anchor points. So if I click on the direct selection tool, I can then hover over and left click on the top in there. Now, we might need to zoom in a bit closer to see this. Bearing in mind that most of the other content on the page is locked away. So go back to my selection tool hover over and click on that top corner. It may well be that it doesn't grab it. So you might have to click away, hover over that corner and left click in there. And that looks like it's grabbed it. Um, it is really fiddly. And to be honest, InDesign doesn't do a very good job of showing you these little handles in there. Um, what makes it even more difficult is that the background is red and the color of the layer is colored, color coded red as well. So these elements in here are hard to spot. Now you could always go to the images layer, double left click, and change the layer color coding to something like yellow. Click OK. And then those elements may be a bit easier to spot. But now that I've clicked on and selected that anchor point in there, you could, if as long as everything else is, is locked away in that region, you can click and hold down the mouse and drag across that. And then using the cursor keys, I can tap the left cursor key. Um, if I've got the shift key held down, I can tap and move that 10 millimeters at a time until that line kind of goes around here where the A is in take a break. So let's just bring it into about there. So there we go. That's how we get the angle in there. But you have to do it with the direct selection tool. So if I go to uh, fit paging window, we've still got the overall size of the box in there. So the height hasn't changed. The width at the bottom hasn't changed. But to get the direct selection tool and pull that top corner in, we had to do that. Um, it, it's a little bit fiddly, but that's what's required. I'm going to switch back to the selection tool, make sure that box is still selected, and then we're going to change uh, and add a stroke in here. So I'm going to go to paper, then I'm going to change the style to dotted, like so, and then increase the stroke weight in there, like so. So that puts a dot around all those elements, and then we need to change the layer order in there. So we need to go to the layers panel, expand it open, and then just take polygon, which is the name of this box that we've just altered in here. Click on that, highlight it in the list and drag that down underneath the thing called rectangle. Like so. Now, the, the challenge with this is that, of course, um, the, the white dots go in front of the red in here, but we only want it down this side down here. This is the frustrating thing about it. The way that this is designed is that there's a lot of elements to it. So let me just press the W key and show you this. We don't want the dots running across the top in there. We don't want dots running over the adverts. Well, the advert's easy to sort because I can just press the W key. I can go to the unlock symbol there, click on it, and then I can choose object arrange, bring to front. And that goes in front of the white box and also the dots as well. So that's fine. I can then go to object and I can choose lock to lock the ad out of the way now. It's just really this top line. Now to eliminate that, what you're going to have to do is create another red box in front of it. So if I pick up my zoom tool, zoom in here, a little bit tedious, but it is required, unfortunately. Um, 
pick up my selection tool just to click away pick up my rectangle tool and then create another rectangle just here over the top like so set the fill to be take a break red and that hides it I also need then to make sure that the take a break text goes at the front so I'll click on that one go to object choose a range bring to front that gets around that issue of the dots around there so it's just a little rectangle it doesn't have to be that big it could it could come down to about there to be perfectly honest but um, I'm just going to pull it up a little bit higher and then I'm going to zoom out a touch because the final step now is to click on the original white box and add a drop shadow to that because it also has a drop shadow as well as a dotted edge to it as well so if I go to the top effects drop shadow and then from here um, I'm going to change the opacity of that to 50% and then change the, uh, the distance of that to uh, three millimeters should be fine size um, a little bit smaller and maybe go a little bit bigger so a bit softer in there yeah that probably looks a bit better um, and then with that done I might want to just drop the opacity a little bit more so maybe 40% uh, that's looking good in there so I can now click OK and then zoom out so we've got that white panel down the side now which will help house all the different bits of articles and all the different color text and things in there um, and with that done then I can pretty much go back to my images layer and I can lock all of those items in there so I don't click on them well, the way we need them they're styled the way that we need them but um, they are going to become uh, just too easy to click on and move around by accident